Supermax Corp saw its fourth quarter earnings plunge 97% to 33.1 million from 962.5 million previously as demand for rubber gloves continues to come off its peak, compounded by continued imposition of the withhold release order by the US government. Revenue for the quarter likewise declined by 84% to 300.2 million from 1.9 billion ringgit previously. Aside from the WRO from the US Customs and Border Protection, sales were also impacted by the Canadian government having suspended orders and deliveries. The glove maker still proposed a final single-tier dividend of 3 cent per share, bringing FY22's payout to 11 cent per share. In FY21, the payout had been 31.8 cent per share. As for its full-year report card, Supermax saw its earnings for FY22 decline 81% year-on-year to 732.4 million from 3.8 billion, while sales declined 62% to 2.7 billion from 7.1 billion previously. According to Supermax's boss filing, not helping numbers were its importers and distributors having had to sell high-priced inventory at falling market prices since end 2021. Its operating costs also increased due to inflationary pressures on utility costs and increase in minimum wage. Going forward, Supermax expects the market to remain weak, saying that the rubber glove industry is currently well into a consolidation phase following the COVID-19-driven growth boom. The group expects to see continued major consolidation in the rubber glove industry as average selling prices and demand continue to moderate from the record high seen at the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Nevertheless, Supermax says the structural shift triggered by the pandemic will see demand remain at a higher level compared to the pre-pandemic period and resume a longer-term upward trend once the current demand-supply disequilibrium rebalances. PKR Deputy President Rafizi Ramli has named former Deputy Defence Minister Datuk Dr. Abdul Latif Ahmad's second wife, Zainab Muhammad Saleh, as the owner of Alizes Marine. The company was also named in the Panama Papers as well as the Paradise Papers, which disclose how offshore companies hide money from illegal activities globally. In a statement, the former Pandan MP also said Zainab was a shareholder in offshore firm Intra Logistics, which in turn has a stake in Alizes Marine Labuan. Rafi PZ said the Governance, Procurement and Finance Investigation Committee's report into the littoral combat ship embezzlement scandal had clearly shown the involvement of the Alizas Marine companies. Abdul Latif, who is currently the Special Functions Minister, has denied that the woman identified by Rafizi is his wife. In a brief statement in the wake of Rafizi's revelation, Abdul Latif denied that Zainab was his spouse. He adds that as a cabinet member, he is prepared to fully cooperate if the authorities wish to investigate further. Meanwhile, in in his statement, Rafizi claims that the embezzlement came in several forms. First, he alleges that the companies were appointed as technical consultants despite not having expertise in the project. Rafizi claims the company sent invoices for work that was not executed and some 23.37 million was swindled in this manner between 2011 and 2014. He further said that Alizes Marine was appointed as a spare part supplier for the LCS project. Rafizi adds that the appointment was based on a false premise that the company was licensed by the French government to export global defence products. He says the company was paid $210 million for spare parts allegedly supplied by a French company, whereas the payment was channeled to shell companies registered in Malta and Labuan. Rafizi says an internal investigation by Baustad Heavy Industries Corp, page 96, paragraph 3.16.13.2 states, it is noted that Abdul Latif is the spouse of Zainab. Abdul Latif was Deputy Defence Minister Minister from 2008 till 2013, when current AMNO President Datuk Dr Ahmad Zaid Hamidi was Defence Minister. Petronas Chemicals Group saw its net profit tick up to 1.87 billion for its second quarter from 1.86 billion previously, as higher product prices helped to offset the impact of plant turnaround activities during the quarter. Petchem's plant utilization rate fell to 72% from 97% last year on statutory turnaround and maintenance activities in its fertilizer plant in Sipitang Sabah and its methanol plant in Labuan. Revenue grew by 17.3% year on year to 6.6 billion, driven by 
by higher crude oil and natural gas prices. It declared a single-tier interim dividend of 25 cent per share. As for its first half, net profit improved year-on-year by 19% to 3.95 billion, while revenue improved by 28.5% from 10.3 billion to 13.2 billion ringgit. Petchem says it expects prices of olefins and derivatives to stabilize with demand recovery following the easing of restrictions in China ahead of year-end restocking activities. CEO Mohammad Yusri Mohammad Yusuf says that the startup of Pengerang International Complex Petrochemical Facilities has commenced in phases in July. As for Petchem's other growth projects, the construction of its nitrile butadiene latex plant in Pengerang and the specialty ethothoxylates and polyols plant in Kerte are also progressing ahead of the scheduled operation date in the second half of 2023. On the proposed acquisition of Stop Holdings, Yusri says that Petchem is expecting to complete it in early fourth quarter of 2022. Post Malaysia narrowed its net loss to 5.25 million for its second quarter, compared with a net loss of 121.8 million a year ago. Apart from the impairment of property, plant, and equipment of 46.7 million, the group said the lower loss was due to lower staff costs pursuant to its recent mutual separation scheme and continuous effective cost management. Quarterly revenue declined 3.1% year on year to 517.3 million from 533.9 million ringgit. This was partly due to a 17 percent fall in postal revenue amid a drop in courier business, following a decrease in overall parcel volume, especially from contract customers. As for the first half, net loss decreased to 35.6 million from 168.6 million in the same period last year, while revenue declined 11.3 percent year on year to an even 1 billion. Group CEO Charles Brewer says the group is cautiously optimistic that its financial performance for FY22 will show continued improvement. He says aside from the mail and parcel businesses, the aviation and logistics segments are recovering and the outlook remains positive, underpinned by the continued reopening of international borders. Nonetheless, with the ongoing economic uncertainties and changing consumer behaviours, Post Malaysia expects the second half to be equally challenging. As a result, it said it will continue to focus on a balanced execution of good customer mix, improving yields, managing costs, while delivering a market-leading service and ensuring an optimum customer experience at every touch point. Point. Kujaya Prospect Group is on track to achieve 1 billion in revenue this year as construction activities normalize, but any further upside is capped by ongoing labor shortages, according to non independent, non executive chairman Datuk T. Eng Ho. The construction firm currently hires over 2,000 foreign workers versus its requirement of at least 4,000 as its manpower, says T. He adds that Kujaya Prospect is in the midst of bringing in about 280 migrant workers from Nepal, while the government has approved another 500 workers. T says for the next batch, the group is targeting another 1,500 people. In terms of the bottom line, T says net profit may reach the 100 million ringgit mark, assuming the group manages to maintain its high single-digit or low double-digit margin and subject to the impact of Chukai Matmo. Kujaya Prospect second quarter net profit jumps 78% year-on-year to 28.5 million on stronger top line. Revenue grew 46% to 276.9 million from 189.9 million ringgit. The group declared a second interim dividend of 1 cent per share. For the first half, net profit improved by 35% year-on-year to 42.4 million, while revenue grew 26% to 577.5 million ringgit. Although raw material and labour costs are likely to stay elevated as compared to pre-pandemic levels, T says the group is still capable of sustaining its current profit margin, as new jobs are all quoted at a higher rate to reflect higher operating costs. T adds that management is not revising the job replenishment target of 1.5 billion, elaborating that it may see another one or two more projects coming in for the remainder of FY22, but declined to reveal more details. Kajaya Prospect's current tender book stands at 1.5 billion to 2 billion ringgit.